There it is. You keep reading down. We'll talk about the Christmas tree. For the custom of the people are vain. For one cut of a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. This Christmas tree. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Put that cross on the bottom and nail it, nail it, nail the trunk to the uh, cross and so forth. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and ha with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Why would we say a tree would speak? Because this is idolatry. You know, it was told that they had power. Nimrod was in this tree. If you don't bring presents and bring all this stuff to Semiramis, under this tree and his spirit is going to kill you. That's why I say, but speak not. They must needs be born. You got to carry them in the house because they cannot go by themselves. Be not afraid of them. Why would I say be not afraid of a Christmas tree? Be not afraid because it's an idol. Be not afraid of them. But they could not do evil. See? Neither also is in it to, to, to be, excuse me, neither also is it in them to do good. They can't do good. So, Deuteronomy 5 and 22. Going back to the law. Deuteronomy 5, 22. Deuteronomy 5 and 22. These words the Most High spake unto you all your assembly in the mount out of the midst of the fire of the cloud you know, the thick darkness with a great voice. And he also and he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone. He wrote them in two tables of stone. The most high wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. The Moses. You see? Deuteronomy 9 and 10. Boy, I don't know. Y'all, y'all playing with fire. The most high say he's consuming fire. Deuteronomy 5, 9, Deuteronomy 9 and 10. And the Most High delivered unto me two tables of stone. The Most High delivered unto Moses two tables of stone. Written with the finger of the Most High. And on them was written according to all the words which the Most High spake with you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. See that? Written with the finger of the Most High. So Psalms 35 and 11. Psalm 35 and 11. Y'all better hear what he's saying. I just wanted to recap that because it's very important for our people to see where we at and what we have done and offended the Most High. Psalm 35 and come back to him by keeping his commandments. Psalm 35 and 11. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Ecclesiastics. The sixth chapter. Ecclesiastics. The sixth chapter. verse 7. So, false witnesses, a lot of times, it could be your so-called friend. This is what it says. Ecclesiastes 6 and 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. Don't be so hasty or in a hurry to give him credit. To be your friend. That's what he's saying. Prove him first take time for well, some man is friend for his own occasion see some some man is your friend for his own reason and would not abide in the day of thy trouble when you have trouble then they gone Poof. if there's a friend who being turned to an in it into enmity being at war with you and strife arguing with you all the time will discover thy reproach you gonna discover your disgrace. The things that, you know, are wrong with you. Or whatever you done been through, if you're trying to get together to change, 
You gonna put it on you like, you know, why the Spirit gave me the the reason to go through forgiveness and repentance. You know, people be holding grudges for years and years and years. You can't you can't be you can't not be healthy and 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 in the spirit first and foremost when you're rolling like that. You know, you're looking for some wrong. I mean. Uh, People that played the role of the Most High to fill within the Father's hands living power. If we repent, and you believe the Most High, accept your repentance, then you keep it moving. No matter what anybody else think, listen, you say, that's why I say there's a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. They're going to look for something negative against you. All the time. That's that strife. And that war. Arguing and bringing war. Discover your reproach, man. Again, some friend is a companion at the table. It will not continue in the day of thy affliction. You're going through affliction. You tell brothers, you tell sisters, hey, I'm going through this, going through that. It'd be like one ear, not the other. That's why I say, who's a real friend? Are they all concerned about their life? That's it. Again, some friend is a companion at the table. Sit down and eat your food, eat, eat with you and do everything. Enjoy your hospitality and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. You sick, next you know, you don't have nobody to deal with you in a proper way. Or you're going through something, tell people, hey, this is what's going on, and poof, they out of there. That's why you got to know a friend. That's why I said don't be so hasty to, to say somebody's your friend. These are applications that will show you whether they are or not. But when the book is closed, all of a sudden, everything is forgotten about. I don't think so. That's why he said, what are you saying? We just got to take heed. He going in. It says, but in that prosperity, when you rolling, you doing great, you got money, he will be as thyself. He'll be just like you. In your prosperity, he going he gonna to be just like you. Hey, we rolling the same. You know? Whatever you say is going to be cool. And will be bold over thy servants. Hear what I say? Going to be bold over those that are, you know, under you. Or you teaching and so forth. Just like, it's, just like he represents you. If thou be brought low, though, you be brought low, he will be against thee and will hide himself from thy face. When things go down, say, dang, where is he at? But he's supposed to be a friend. But where they at? This happened, that happened, this happened, this going on, this going on, this going on. Just poof, be gone. Don't see him no more. And some, they bring up false accusations against you. Don't even know what they're talking about. They're supposed to be your friend. And your friend to make sure that they make it right. People will say what, but there are brothers that are real brothers. A real brother. That know. Hey. You lying on that brother. Or like you're saying. He'll hide his face from you. You don't see him no more. He says, separate thyself from thine enemies. And take heed of thy friends. Hear that? He says, separate yourself from your enemies. You know they're enemies. He said, and take heed to your friends. A faithful friend is a strong defense, man. 
a faithful friend that's down with you is a strong defense. So that's why I say two are better than one. A faithful friend is a strong defense. And he that have found such an one have found a treasure. And let you know, it's very hard to find. I think Solomon said he found one. Out of all the riches that he had and all that, he said he found one. He said he found one woman that was worthy. And he had a thousand women. That's something, man. But that's the world we in. Because we ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why the change has to be, like I say, you got to learn it, live it, and apply it in your life. You got to be different. Especially now, this is our last chance to get it together. It's so important. That's why I say separate thyself from thine enemies. Hmm. Some of you join into your enemies, and you're going to fall by the sword. Straight up. You say separate yourself from your enemies. And take heed of thy friends. Be aware of your friends. Say a faithful friend is a strong defense, man. And he that have found such an one has found a treasure. Wow. Say nothing does countervail a faithful friend. And his excellency is invaluable, man. To find a faithful friend. His excellency is invaluable. Then they're going to be moved to the right or to the left. They're going to be right there. Just like his shoe. Invaluable. Can't put a value on that, man. Somebody that's really down with you. You can really say it's a true friend. It says a faithful friend is the medicine of life. You know, a faithful friend is the medicine of life. Man. And they that fear the most high shall find him. If you, don't, you ain't afraid and scared of the most high, highly respect him to be afraid and scared of him, you ain't going to find no faithful friend. Who so feared the most high, who's afraid, who's scared of the most high, but y'all think fear of me is something different. Who so feared the most high shall direct his friendship aright. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. That's right. But David said, Psalm 35, 11, false witnesses did rise up. See that? They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Put some on it he even know. Uh, matter of fact, go to Michael 7 and 5. Michael 7 and 5. Shoot. He said he, he, he brought up stuff he didn't know what's going on. I don't know nothing about that. Now we went into um, uh, Susanna, how they accused her of laying with a man. They end up getting put to death. Michael 7 and 5. It said, Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep, it says, Keep the doors of thy mouth. What you say from her that lieth in thy bosom. So you're supposed to be telling your wife everything. And women's hearing this should not want to know everything. Being nosy and so forth. Dipping in one be, you know, going into a man's phone and and trying to find out what the brothers is doing, what what's going on here, what's going on there, how they own little mind. That's devil. That's evil. That's why I say trust ye not in a friend. And your friend, your closest friend is your woman. Supposed to be, they put ye not confidence in a guide, somebody that's trying to lead you around. Better be knowing what you got to deal with to keep the doors of thy mouth from her that life in thy bosom. Meaning, you're not supposed to tell uh, your woman everything. Just not talking about, we ain't talking about no wickedness, man. We're talking about whatever it is that you're dealing with and dealing with, you know, the truth and righteousness. It says, For the son dishonored the father. The daughter rises up against her mother. This is real, man. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies are they of his own house. Wow. So a man's enemies are they of his own house. Let's go to St. John, the 10th chapter. 
I mean, his own family. Evil to Mashiach, Go to St. John 10 and 22. We just, um, we just came out of the Feast of Dedication. This is what he celebrated. Do you preachers teach that? What am I shaking a shy celebrating? Look, St. John 10, 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication. And it was winter, you see? So the Feast of Dedication is something that we decided we was going to observe in getting our temple back from the Greeks. When you read in the Apocrypha that y'all took out, Protestant church took out, you read about it right here in the Maccabees. In the short version in the fourth, Maccabees the fourth chapter. Let me read it for you. Um, first Maccabees four, and They, we rededicated we the temple back because the Greeks had defiled our temple. And look when it happened. First Maccabees 1, since y'all dealing with Christmas, look when it happened. Um, First Maccabees, the fourth chapter, the 52nd verse. Now on the 5 and 20th day, of the of the ninth month, which is Esau's twelfth month, because you know the new moon starts in spring, in the springtime, between the third month and the fourth month. Now on the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, which would be Christmas, which is called the month Kaslu, that we call Kaslu. And not what they call it. In the hundred forty and eighth year, and they they rose up beat times in the morning, and offered sacrifice according to the law, upon the new altar of burnt offerings, which they had made. Look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it, even in that was it dedicated with songs and cisterns and harps and. Symbol, you see that? So, the 25th day of Esau's 12th month, which is our ninth month, is when they defiled and profaned the temple, the altar and so forth, by sacrificing swine's flesh and having whores and prostitutes selling their body in the temple, all kind of things, unclean things to make it profane or unholy. Then all the God people fell upon their faces and worshiping and praising the power of heaven who had given them good success to get our temple back, our altar back. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. We were delivered from our enemies. They decked also the front forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields and the gates and the chambers, they renewed and hanged doors upon them. This is what we read. Now, read this because Machiko Sai is honoring the same feast of dedication that we're reading about here. In the Greek Empire, you see? As joined. Says, thus was there very great gladness among the people, the Israelites, for that the reproach of the heathen. These other nations, the Greeks and all other nations that was joined under them and wicked Israelites was put away. Moreover, Judas and his brethren, this, this Judas and his brethren with the whole congregation of Israel ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season that we see in the Mashiach of Shai doing in St. John 10, 22 from year to year by the space of eight days. From the five and twentieth day of the month, Kazu, that's Christmas, for you to know, with mirth and gladness. But it's not going to fall on the twelfth month, the twenty-fifth day. I'm just using that as an example for that is the day that they defiled our temple. That is the day that we 
dedicated it back. Because we go by the moon. The new moon, we count 25 days from the new moon. Whenever that falls, you don't have to necessarily be on no 25th day. It could be any day. Okay? So, here it is in John 10, 22. It says, and it, and it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of de de Dedication. Selected. What we just read about. 